Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about real seniors. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, I hope you're doing well. I've been pondering this question for a while and I thought maybe your opinion on this might be helpful to me. My question is, how can I spot a real senior developer during an interview as an interviewee? I'm asking this mainly because I'm at my third job and I think I still haven't found yet a type of senior dev who I'm can, I can learn, really learn a lot from. I got the chance to work with smart people and I'm thankful for that, however I get the feeling that I haven't worked with true experts like you, if I may say so. Of course, I was allowed to ask questions during the interview, but I, was, but I wasn't able to think of good questions that will tell whether or not I'll be working in a fruitful environment or not. Thank you for your time and have a great day. Well, uh, this is at least th the problem usually for you as an interviewee is that you don't really have the time to go in depth with the person that you're talking to. You can ask questions of the person in front of you, but that's not necessarily the person you're going to work with, which makes this almost impossible, really, if you ask me. Uh, the, the way that I... Like, because if you're the interviewer, so like when I, for example, try to figure out if someone is quote unquote like what their seniority level is, and I can tell you should fairly easily because as you see, you can go and check my like I made a video a while back called like not the front end if you if it's front end questions in this case, but I mean the same thing works for the back end devs when I talk to them and so forth. It's the same principle. Uh, the questions that I focus on are experience questions where I will like there's no wrong answer you can basically just say that you don't know what I'm talking about or you can give me like a very detailed explanation of the question an example of like if uh, uh, if I take something from let's take CSS uh, can you tell me what types of CSS you've been working with like how have you do you usually do it are you using post CSS list CSS uh, inline styles, CSS in JS, what and how do you usually compare which one you're going to go with? Do I, when do you choose one over the other? And what do you see as benefits and consequences with those choices? That is, uh, like I've been in so many of these interviews guys, where the answer range on that one is like you, the, 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 the width of difference is enormous where a junior software developer will basically say I've only worked with one because I don't know anything else. The most senior experts will give me a fairly good analysis and they basically say that well I go with this under these circumstances and I usually pick between this. I'm not really a fan of this. I, can, I don't, I can, you can't go into this of course if I give you my thoughts on this as well. But the only person who can answer that with any type of depth is a true senior software developer because an average mid-level the sort of people that call themselves seniors but they're not really seniors are the people who will say oh I only use that one thing because the, the reality is guys that this is a question that will measure how much qualitative, qualitative learning you have done in other words you cannot possibly answer this question to the same depth, uh, even if you work for 20 years, if the only thing you've ever done is, I don't know, inline styles or vanilla CSS, you cannot formulate an opinion on anything else because you've never done anything else. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you're bad, it just means that the lim you have a limited understanding of a much wider ecosystem, which is going to be a problem for you, if, for example, if you're looking for someone who can teach you things and so forth. And this person might be able to teach you some stuff, but that very much depends. Like My argument is usually that the broader the understanding of the individual you're dealing with, the more likely you are to see the depth. this uh, idea that some people have that, oh, if you don't specialize, you're not going to be good at anything is absolute bullshit. Uh, the best of the best that I work with, guys, are better at all the things, usually. Uh, no, I mean, they're not uh, like uh, not for things that they not usually don't work with, but guys, the, the best front-end developers, for example, that I work with, they are full-stack developers. Like they, they can rival the back-end developers on their back-end skills and they're masters of their craft in the front-end as well. So 
these are the sorts of individuals you're looking for because there is this notion that there's some type of equilibrium of talent that's absolute bullshit as well the most talented software developers are not just good at one thing usually it's down to like what are their interest level and what have they actually been focusing their time on and that's something that people like to say is not you know if you're good you can only be good at one or the other as i said it's absolute bullshit it's like saying that someone who just does running all the time is going to be better at running than someone who is a triathlete well that's not true either and you know i think everybody knows that deep down but for you to figure that out as the interviewee it basically comes down to do you have the option of talking can you talk to the people that work there because the person who's doing the interview might not be the person you're going to work with and if you ask them these sorts of questions, these are very good. That's an example of a question that if you ask that question and they give you a really deep, good answer to how to do this or, you know, with other areas, you can think up any number of these sorts of questions. I have tons of them if you, you know, if you want them, uh, where y they will show how much experience they have with different approaches to solving the various problems that you have in, in software development this is what you want and if as i said usually the people who are not that good uh, usually have like a limited experience they will just give you a very short con uh, short answer they might be very correct it might be that they know exactly what you're talking about but they haven't done enough living it's like as i said it's like talking to someone who has just lived in this you know you, you, you ask asking for advice on world politics might not be the best thing if you go to talk to someone who's been a politician in just one town for their entire life they might have a good understanding of that town or like whatever's going on there but they're like the, uh, not in a global setting if that makes sense and the people who have that understanding they will be able to answer these sorts of questions where they compare different approaches of technology and wh what the benefits and consequences are with different types of choices that you can make because there are always pros and there are cons this is the thing that separates the truly great software developers from the mediocre ones because the mediocre ones will not have the burning passion or the de desire to continuously improve themselves in such a way that they can actually answer questions like this because as I said you can absolutely make the claim that you're just gonna focus on one thing and sure your one thing could be Java or C sharp or like whatever but fundamentally there is always going to be situations where you have to pick one thing over the other functional programming versus object oriented programming um, uh, AVS versus Azure or GCP uh, using uh, like uh, Kubernetes versus like there's tons of these choices that you have to make and if you are truly senior you will have been part of these choices more than once and live to see how these things usually turn out and hopefully done some personal reflection on what went well what didn't go so well and that's the thing that you're looking for uh, these sorts of questions where they have to express uh, like uh, a an opinion on a choice where there are multiple ways of doing this and then just listen to them sort of like you know when you ask those sorts of questions what would you do if you could blah 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 hear them just reflect on what choices they would have made and then listen for the depth if they can go on and really give you a good explanation and give you concrete examples of how they would have solved it or how they have solved it in the past and sort of the learnings they got from those choices that is a very good indicator that you're dealing with a true senior so what I want you to take away from this is that the way that at least I figure out if someone is like a like what the seniority level is is that I ask experience questions usually if I'm doing the interview it's much easier because I have more questions that I can ask uh, because we usually have more time when like usually it's from the company perspective that you ask things and I usually start very simple like I can start with everything from like can you explain to me what a semantic HTML is so could you explain to me can you give me so a good under like, explanation of polymorphism? What's polymorphism? Or like it doesn't really matter. You start with some basics, and then if they give and you just listen to the answer. If it's a very shallow answer and a lot of like uncertainty in the answer, it's usually a junior you're dealing with. If it's like a very short, like concrete 
think that's probably a mid level like someone who's like proving that yeah okay this is a this was an easy one and then you increase it and the best questions when you get to that level is usually when you ask them like different approaches to doing the same sort of things and how they reason about one approach over another that's when you're dealing and when they do get those questions right and they usually um, go into depth on like how, how they came up with these sorts of ideas and why they like this and they can actually really express this in a good way this is usually an individual who has truly quote unquote mastered an area of IT because they've done enough living that they've seen a few ways of doing this thing uh, that they're not limited to one thing they don't have like a narrow understanding of this problem they have a broader perspective because as I've said before guys being broad doesn't mean that you're shit at things it means that you have a holistic understanding of the problem because if you only know exactly one way of doing something and you quote unquote specialize in that approach that doesn't necessarily mean that you're very good at solving that problem because the problem itself might have multiple solutions and if you don't know of any other way of doing something it's difficult for you to get that holistic understanding of how to solve a problem effectively so you can like you don't listen to these people who say that oh if you're not a purist with one thing or something else like that's abs it's absolute bullshit that there is some type of magical thing where if you just focus on one thing you're going to be better than somebody who tries out a few approaches it's down to mu much more complicated thing and we can call it talent if you want than that that simple factor and it is those people that have done that living that are the quote unquote true seniors these are the sorts of people that you usually uh, want to work with if you're trying to like improve your own understanding and so forth and so forth because usually when you get to the point as this uh, this person where you've been working a little while and you're trying to find someone who can mentor you what you're basically looking for is someone who is at a higher level than you and that is either only, it's usually going to happen in just two ways either you work with something you're not really so good at like if you start working in a completely new tech stack then basically anybody's going to do as long as they know that tech stack or if you're actually fairly solid in your understanding you're going to have to uh, talk to someone who's done quite a bit of living and try different approaches to different patterns or different ways of solving a problem and have them hopefully share with you sort of why they go with one approach over another and now the last thing that is a little bit more tricky as well comes into play and that is just because you find such an individual who can really give you those sorts of reflections doesn't necessarily mean that you have that personal chemistry with them that you can sort of share that like where they might not be like you might not get a good chance of learning from them but hopefully by just working close to them and sort of observing the way that they do their job and the way they sort of reason about things you have the opportunity to ask questions and this is exactly what you're looking for as i said these sorts of experience questions you can post 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 them in pull requests etc etc and try to just get them to talk about their process of reasoning when they are making the choices they are making because the people who as i said have that deep explanation to why they go with one thing over another these are the people who have some really really awesome nuggets of gold of, of information uh, these are the people you want to work with have a great day